Ladies and gentlemen, let's for a game into the comp video. Let us discuss Intel's latest set of Haswell processors, also known as the Haswell Refresh. So they're going to be hitting the market any day now. Um, despite the fact that reportedly they were going to be available for next month, um, we're going to be seeing the motherboards based on the 9 series LGA1150 chipset appearing um, and we're also going to be seeing of course the CPUs reaching stores pretty shortly. There's going to actually be 44 new chips um, introduced by Intel so 27 of those are for desktops while the rest are for like mobile devices. Um, so what do we get? What's the differences? Well not that much actually. Um, there's not really anything new with the CPUs, so they're based pretty much on the Haswell architecture, so if you've already got a Haswell CPU, you're most likely not really going to need to upgrade at all. Um, Haswell, of course, actually debuted last year, but they're basically slightly higher clock speeds, um, and so they're pretty much going to replace the previous models with 100 megahertz in addition. So the Haswell refresh also brings, there's going to be like a new non-K king, non-K of course, meaning non-overclocking, or at least not easy to overclock. Um, and that's going to be the 4790, that's going to be running at 3.6 gigahertz. And there's going to be various low power um, versions of that, but... Despite the fact there's going to be an absolute bucket load of new uh, i5s, I think there's around like 10, and tons of low-end Pentiums and Celeron models and other shinies is going to be, mobile segments is going to be like several new quad-core processors, they're going to be different clock speeds from like 2 to, uh, sorry, 2.1 to 2.5 gigahertz, various core Pentiums and Celeron dual-core processors, um, but for example, it's not really anything that's going to set the world on fire, and of course the price range is all going to be pretty much what you'd expect. For example, the i7-4790 is going to be costing you like, you know, 303 um, US dollars. So basically, these are going to be great for those who want slightly faster clock speeds. They are not going to be worth most likely upgrading. If you've not currently got a system, you're also going to have to basically figure out, you know, is it worth going this extra route when you can get, like, pretty cheap uh, Intel CPUs now. So for gamers, typically, um, it's not really a massive big deal. And I wanted to cover this because there's been a lot of discussion on the Haswell refresh and there's been a lot of confusion of you know what is it going to bring it's not going to be like DDR4 memory so we're not going to be getting like mem more memory bandwidth there's not going to be an increase in say the amount of threads that's available obviously if you're talking part for part um, so the CPUs with hyper threading generally going to be like four uh, uh, four cores with like eight threads so for example once again just to take the 4790 it's still going to be four cores uh eight threads eight megabytes level three cache and so on and so forth so it's all pretty much business as usual so if you've got something along the lines of the 2500k which is still an amazing processor by the way it's actually very cheap now on ebay just to you know point it out if you guys are looking to build a cheap gaming system you actually get some really good deals on like the 2500 and 2600k's because people are selling them off mostly because people are actually wanting to get this Haswell refresh which isn't really worth it um, but what you can do is you could either just go with a Haswell now or you can keep your system current and a lot of people of course are going to be going for like the 14nm um, which is going to be popping up pretty shortly, well, I'll say shortly, you know, next couple of years, we're going to certainly be having that, um, and as well, we're also going to be having the Haswell E's as well, reportedly, um, and the Haswell E's reported they're going to be quite expensive, um, and eventually, of course, we're going to move on to, like, DDR4 and so on, but a lot of this is going to be for a while now, and in these cases, um, for LGA 1150, it doesn't really make any difference. So anyway, hopefully that's cleared some stuff up. Obviously, I went on a little bit of a tangent there just to kind of give you a little bit of perspective on this. So just to reiterate, if you're, like, looking at something like the 
4770K or the 4670 or something along those lines, you know, the K variants, and you're like, well, should I buy now? Pretty much no reason not to. Um, particularly if you're going to be overclocking with a good air cooler anyway. There are some rumors that I'm hearing that indicate that these CPUs are going to be over quite easy to overclock and there's going to be some good performance. But that's not been confirmed really. And to be honest with you, I think if you just want to buy, this is not like you're going to be getting like huge performance increases anyway. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.